Welcome to reading a different genre every single day this week. I've had this video idea on my video ideas list for a while and I'm so glad I'm finally doing it. I feel like I rarely get out of my genre comfort zone. My genre comfort zone being first and foremost mostly romance and then I've also this year started getting into fantasy romance and then every fall I always read a little bit of mystery thriller so I'm definitely going to be reading my comfort zone genres but I also want to challenge myself this week to read books outside of my comfort zone that I wouldn't normally read. And because I'm going to be reading a different genre every single day of the week that also means I'll be completing a book every single day of the week. So I'm definitely going to prioritize shorter books, books I'm in the middle of, audiobooks, basically books that will be easier to read in a single day. And I'm actually in the middle of reading Caraval. I started it a few days ago and I am loving it so, so much. Our main characters are Scarlett and Donatella. They're sisters. They've always wanted to go to Caraval. And Caraval is basically this magical competition is the best way to know how to describe it. You have to get an invitation to go and this year they finally got an invitation to attend. They get to Caraval and then Donatella gets kidnapped and she is this year's competition. Whoever finds Donatella first at Caraval wins and the prize is one wish. The amount of money I would pay to be able to attend Caraval if it was real is insane. I might sell an organ to attend Caraval. Caraval definitely has a kind of dark sinister undertone to the whole thing which is a little intimidating if I were to actually go in real life, but I would still go because of how magical it is. Oh my gosh, I just got to page 314 and this book has taken such a turn that I just didn't see coming. I kind of thought I had a feeling of where the plot is going and it's not going the way I thought at all. So I have absolutely no idea how this book is gonna end. What I think is so cool, definitely my favorite part about this book so far, is that it blends fantasy, romance, and mystery. I feel like most books just have two genres max, but the fact that this book has three genres and that the mystery is a pretty big part of it is very cool because Scarlet has to follow all the clues to find her missing sister in order to win Caraval. So it's like magic, clues, mystery, romance, like just, Everything I love. Literally, I said all my three comfort genres, romance, fantasy, and mystery, and we have all of that in this book. My copy of Caraval is a special edition from Barnes and Noble and I think it's so pretty. And one thing I also really love about it is all the details, like these letters are so beautifully printed. The chapter pages are so pretty and all that beautiful detailing is in the normal edition as well. I just really appreciate when there's a lot of attention to detail in books. It just makes it feel really special to read. I made it to the epilogue. I love Stephanie Garber's writing. The other book I've read by her is the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And like, she just has such a way of creating really cool, like fairy tale like worlds, having her writing style match how magical the world feels. Okay, I've officially finished the book and there was a little bonus section at the end. Stephanie Garber included a bunch of her notes and scanned pages of her journal entries from when she was first coming up with the idea of Caraval and I read it all and it's so cool to read how it started as such an abstract idea. It says that she started out by asking herself, what if there was a traveling game and it blurred the lines between fantasy and reality? And then it slowly develops into having more and more plot and certain characters started out having completely different roles in the story than where they ended up. So it was just really cool to read. Overall, I think I give this book 4.5 stars I definitely want to read the sequel ASAP. I am very confident it's going to be a five-star series overall. I love the world. I love how it's romantic and magical, but also dark and mysterious. And I literally just never knew what was going to happen next. Oh my gosh, you know what I just realized? My outfit is completely matching my bed. My bed is like green and white and my outfit is green and white. And speaking of my outfit, it is from Halara who has kindly sponsored today's video. 
I love Halora so much. A big goal of mine dressing wise is to just get more into comfy clothes, athleisure. I spend so much time reading and working from home and Halora's clothes are truly the perfect lounge clothes, but you can still wear them out if you want to. So it's the best of both worlds. Like these pants are so stretchy and comfy. This top could totally double as a workout top if I wanted it to. They sent me a ton of clothes that I will show you guys throughout this video. And one of the main things I love about them is their pants. They have so many great pants for fall and winter. I think they are truly the epitome of value. Their clothes are comfy and stretchy, but also at a really affordable price. And their price affordability definitely doesn't sacrifice quality. And you can click the link in my description to order some Halara clothes and you can use my code to get 15% off your order. And again, I'll show you more of the clothes that I got because I'm gonna be wearing them on different days throughout this video. Okay, that is it for our day one, which was fantasy. Today was a pretty light day, but tomorrow I will be reading a whole book from start to finish. So today I'm gonna to be listening to the audiobook of The Unhoneymooners. No, The Honeymoon Crashers, which is the sequel to The Unhoneymooners. It's a novella. I think the audiobook is like five hours and it takes place in the same world, involves the same characters, but it follows a different romance than the first book. Other than that, I really have no idea what to expect. And it's only in audiobook form. They didn't release a paperback or a hardback version at all, which I feel like is controversial to do just an audiobook. I've never heard of anybody doing that before. I'm gonna go on a walk right now, and then when I get back, I'll let you know my thoughts on what I had listened to so far. I just got back from my walk and I'm like an hour in to the audiobook. And it's such a cool audiobook. I love, I love when audiobooks really just go all in on like sound effects, like a whole big cast of voice actors. And this audiobook does that. It's dual POV from both of our main characters. And we have a voice actor, not only for each of our main characters, but also side characters have their own voice actors, which is so cool. There's sound effects. I wish every single audiobook ever did that. And basically the plot is that Amy, who is the sister of the main character in the first book is planning the couple from the first book's wedding and she's also getting her own romance story in this novella. I also am in love with this workout dress from Halara. I've always wanted to get a workout dress before and I've always seen their workout dresses so I'm so happy I am now have finally tried it. It's literally so cute. It comes in so many colors. It's so comfortable and what I appreciate the most is that it has two pockets which is perfect for your phone, your keys, anything you need while you're working out, your headphones. Then I hopped in the shower to rinse off after my walk and when I got out of the shower I changed into this cute outfit from Hilara. I love that the pants, they look like jeans but they aren't. They are a stretchy material which I love but they still give you that jeans look so they're just so perfect for lounging and relaxing at home or going out if you want to look like you're wearing jeans when you're actually super comfy in stretchy pants. And then I love the color of this top. I think this pink is so pretty. And this top is also great in that it can double as a workout top or just a casual at home hangout top. And it comes in so many colors. Literally all these clothes come in a million colors, which I just love so much. So no matter what your taste is, your color preference, Halara's got you. So that is my Halara outfit for day two. And then I'll show you guys one more outfit from Halara tomorrow as well. Okay, let's get back to reading. Oh, okay. I'm about halfway through. I am two hours and 16 minutes in. I've just been trying to do every possible chore I can think of doing while listening to this audiobook. Normally when I listen to audiobooks, I listen to them over time, like an hour a day-ish kind of thing on my walk. So trying to find stuff to do while listening to this audiobook for five hours straight today has proven more difficult than I thought. But I'm still liking it so far. It's so cute. There isn't much conflict, which is my only complaint. So I'm not on the edge of my seat or anything like obsessed with it, but it is very cute. One hour left. Look at He's annoyed at me. He's like, leave me alone. It's my afternoon nap. I don't want to play. But you have to entertain me. Oh, <laughs> Luca. I think that was his way of saying no paparazzi. Okay, it's like five hours later and I have finally finished the audiobook. It was so cute. I would say 3.5 stars just because it is like a lighter, cuter romance. 
ones. It was a little bit anticlimactic, but it is a novella. I feel like with a novella, it's so short, you just can't go into that much depth and you don't have that much time to really build up a huge conflict. So for it being a novella, I think it's great. If you like The Unhoneymooners, especially if you like Amy's character or you just wanna see where the main couple is now, then I think it's definitely worth a listen. It's super cute, super short. Hello, so today it's time to start I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I think I've only read one memoir, which was When Breath Becomes Air, and I loved it so much. But yeah, just in general, nonfiction is a whole category that I don't pick up very often. And I actually also got the audiobook of this book because the audiobook is read by Jeanette McCurdy, so I think it's really cool to hear her words in her own words. And I got about an hour into the audiobook this morning. And so far in the first hour, we have started in her childhood and it's really focused on her relationship with her mom and also her starting to get into acting. I don't think I knew that getting into acting was never her idea. Her mom definitely pushed her towards getting into acting and we're starting to see how it doesn't seem like the healthiest parenting style and I fear it's only gonna get worse. But I'm gonna switch over to the physical book now to read. I am on page 105 and I just hit chapter 30. The chapters are really short. Like it's crazy we're already on chapter 30, only on page 105. But we are now at the part where Jeanette has got onto the show iCarly and it's so interesting now that we've gotten to her iCarly days. Miranda Cosgrove has made an appearance. I am on page 167 and we've just gotten to the part where I Carly ends and I love this quote so much. It's specifically written for her ending I Carly and not seeing the people that she's worked with for so many years again. But I think it's so relatable, just to so many situations in life that ends. It's a little bit of a long one, but I think it's really great. So I wanna read it to you. It says, you get to know the people around you so intimately because you're around them more than you're around your family for a period of time. And then you aren't anymore. And little by little you realize you start talking less and less to the people you thought you were so intimate with until you don't talk to them at all anymore. And it makes you wonder if you were ever really intimate with them in the first place or if it was all just a facade, if the connections were as temporary as the sets they were made on. And that just reminds me of so many fleeting friendships, especially school friendships that ended when that class ended or even friendships I had the entirety of college, but now we don't speak anymore, that college is over. It goes on to say, I don't like knowing people in the context of things. Oh, that's the person I work with. That's the person I'm in a book club with. Because once the context ends, so does the friendship. I don't know why this section just really hit me and it was worded so beautifully. Also, I wanna show you my day three Halara outfit. First, I've got these really comfy pink pants. When I say they're so comfortable, they're literally so comfortable and I love the color and they come in a ton of other color options. And then I'm wearing this white shirt, which like all the other tops works for just a casual top or as a workout top, especially for fall and winter. I didn't previously own any warmer workout tops. So this is truly so perfect. And literally all the outfits that I've showed you guys are perfect for fall, perfect for winter. Halara also sent me these pink pants in a thicker material for when it starts to get cooler. And that is all of my Halara outfits for this week. I think my favorite pieces were the workout dress. It's so cute and so functional. And the green pants that I wore at the beginning of this video. That dark green is so cute for fall and they are so comfortable. And just a reminder that you can click the link in my description and use my code to get 15% off your order. Thanks so much again to Halara for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys for joining me on these little outfits of the day. Okay, let's get back to reading. I just got to page 244. We're getting very much into Jeanette's addiction and eating disorder, and it's crazy how much of it stemmed from her relationship with her mother. I started listening to the audiobook again while reading, just because we we're getting to more emotional part and I wanted to hear her say her words. It's so heartbreaking, and it's crazy. When you just look at so many people, especially famous people, you think they have it so easy. Their life is perfect. You wanna be like them, you idolize them, and you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. I'm on the last chapter. I finished the book. The ending. It's like you know everything throughout the whole book that her mom has done to her, but for some reason at the end when she just lays it all out in a list, it's like, wow. 
she suffered so much abuse at the hands of her mother, the person whose job it is to protect her and guide her and be there for her. 100% five stars. I feel like I'm just processing so much. I love Jeanette's writing style. It wasn't what I expected going into it. She really just cuts all the BS. There's no flowery language. There's no trying to make her writing sound super beautiful or adding metaphors. She's very dry and to the point. It makes it feel very raw and honest and transparent. And man, wow. I think everybody should read this book, of course, assuming you've checked the trigger warnings. I feel like there's five billion more things to say, but I also feel like I am still processing and I just need a second to process. So I think I'm gonna end today here. That was our memoir category. My brain is like scrambled eggs, especially reading it all in one day. That was a lot, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Today is mystery thriller day and I'm gonna be finishing The Housemaid. I started this book in a 24 hour readathon like a month ago and I was really enjoying it when I started but for some reason once the 24 hour readathon ended, I just had no desire to pick it back up. I just don't think I was really in that much of a mystery thriller mood at the time but now that it's officially fall, I am so excited to start reading more mysteries and thrillers. I'm on page 165 so I'm about halfway-ish through the book. It's about a housemaid who just got hired to work for this wealthy family and there's weird stuff going on in this house. Hello Luca! Oh! I'm on to part two. I just got to page 206 and oh my gosh, we have gotten to the plot twist. We've gotten to the plot twist. I'm so confused too because what? Based on this plot twist, there's like so much that doesn't add up from the rest of the book. Like I need an explanation for what the heck is going on. I also just got my nails done and they got little ghosts on them, which is just perfect for starting a mystery thriller. I just got to page 292 and I am loving our main character, Millie. She has got spunk, but I feel like I didn't really care that much about her until now. That is one thing that's hard when you have a main character where part of their past and backstory is part of the reveal of the book. I feel like I do need to know a decent amount about a character to start to care for them. So I just wish that I had cared about her sooner, but I understand why we couldn't know more about her until until now and I'm almost done. I have like 30 pages left. I just finished the book and they set up the ending to lead us into the sequel. I didn't know when I started this book that there was a sequel. I think I would give this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. I just think there's past mysteries and thrillers that I've enjoyed more. There is one big plot twist in this book, which was crazy as you guys saw and caught me off guard. I just love twists in books and I wish there was like more little twists sprinkled throughout. But yeah, I would definitely read the second book. Okay, yay, that is the end of Mystery Thriller Day. Good morning. So this morning I started reading Eight Dates and I got to page 42. These authors say that they can predict whether or not a couple is going to last with 94% accuracy, which is crazy. Like that is such a bold claim. It says, after a decade of analyzing the data, John discovered that one set of variables determined whether a marriage would succeed or fail with the couples being positive or negative during their interview. Either they emphasize their good times together and minimize the bad times, or they emphasize their bad times and minimize the good times. And it goes on to say a little bit of other things within that, whether they emphasize their partner's positive traits and minimize their negative ones or vice versa. And basically what they've learned is that couples who really last really talk about each other in a way that expresses a lot of fondness and affection and also glorifies their past struggles, which is such an interesting way to phrase it, glorifying their struggles. So yeah, that was just, very unexpected but I think it makes a lot of sense when you stop and think about it if you think about your partner and the first thing that comes to mind is all their negative traits or all these conflicts you had in the past and how you're still resentful over them versus looking at your partner and thinking of all their positive traits even though there are things about them that annoy you or thinking about your conflicts as wow we survived those arguments and conflicts and got past them I think just show that you'd really be willing to work through things and you still view them in such a positive light despite their flaws I just thought that was a very interesting little tidbit
thing that I'm really liking about this book so far is that it has challenges in it and activities to reaffirm the things that you're taught in the beginning of that chapter. A thing that I have a problem with a lot of self-help books is that after I read a self-help book, I feel so great. Like I learn so much, so insightful, but then a lot of times, and this is on me, I don't actually do anything about it. I don't actually apply the things I learned. So I like that this book teaches you things and then gives you ways to apply them. I am about halfway through the book. Something that comes up in every single section is really taking time to discuss and ask the origin of a habit in your partner that you may view as negative. Like the example was say your partner just turns the TV on really loud. That's annoying to you. Like that's such a simple little thing, but there could be a bigger reason for that. Like maybe as a child, they were home alone a lot because their parents worked a lot and having the TV on all the time was very comforting to them. It may necessarily solve the conflict, but that can allow us to view that annoying thing in a completely different light and with a lot more empathy. I think that's also just so helpful in any kind of relationship, not even a romantic relationship. I'm on to the last section. I finished the book. I really liked it. I think I would give it four stars. I think this book is really great for anybody in a long-term relationship that really wants to strengthen their relationship. You don't have to be having any relationship problems or anything like that to pick up this book. It's very geared towards doing, not just learning, which I really, really love. Okay, that is the end of day five, genre five, and book five, and the end of this video. But yeah, with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.